Good afternoon, DevOps Days DC. My name is Graham Baggett. I work at the US Census Bureau. Yes, supporting Lilly Lemonade stands all across the country. And I want to talk to you about open source software this afternoon and specifically what type of licensing considerations you should be making. Now, as a modern software developer, so many core capabilities have already been created for you. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's nice, right? I mean, who wants to spend precious time writing their own Linux code? OK, fine, maybe for Richard Stallman. But for the rest of us, we use these building blocks that you can put together in a unique, compelling, and secure way, and then deliver them to your customers to drive business value. These building blocks are, open op are often open source software libraries. And these libraries come with licenses. And when you bring these libraries into your ecosystem, you agree to comply with the terms of each open source license. Now we're going to have a picture here of three different licenses. So we've got the Apache license, the Mozilla public license, and the GNU public license. And each one of those licenses imposes different obligations on the users of those corresponding open source software libraries. Why should you care about all this licensing stuff anyway? Well, besides the fact that you agree to comply with it when you bring it into your ecosystem, it's the law. Who wants a lawsuit on their hands? Not me. And Probably not you either. OK, let's say you're writing code for a cool new app you've been working on, and you realize that you need to add a library. And then you remember, oh, yeah, there was that DevOps days talk on licensing. Um, what questions was I supposed to be asking again? Uh, there's many different questions that you can ask about licensing. But you can start with one very basic question. Does this library want to add even have a license that lets me add it into my application? If so, you're good to go. If not, then that library is under exclusive copyright. Yes, even if the author intended it for the, co for the code to be public, even if the author put it in a public repo, no license, exclusive copyright, no bueno. That's weird, right? I mean, publicly viewable code should be publicly usable, right? Not exactly. So if you find yourself in this situation, what options do you have? Well, you could evaluate the situation and see, maybe you don't need that library after all. Maybe remove the capability, remove the feature, evaluate the impact. Flex those streamlining muscles you have. <laughs> Another thing you can do is swap that library for a licensed compatible alternative. Just make sure you don't blow up the app if you go this route and get an incident report written up. You know, Person A swapped a library, impact, the universe blew up. OK, so are all open source licenses the same? No. There are many different open source licenses, as we saw earlier. Two major categories you should be aware of, permissive and copy left. Permissive licenses mainly deal with attribution and warranty disclaimers. Copy left licenses aim to preserve not just the open source status of the library itself, but also keep modifications and derivative works open source as well. Copy left mainly deals with distribution. So that's saying that if you've got a modification, you've got the derivative work, that work, that modification has to be shared under the same license as the original library itself. So what can you do with all this knowledge? First, you can create a checklist. Ask yourself, am I using any unlicensed software? What type of licenses am I using anyway? Am I using non-open source licenses, like HashiCorp's business source license? Doing all this analysis by hand can be tedious. So you may want to use a tool to help figure out what licenses you're using. After all, to quote G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. <laughs> you can put license scanning in your CI CD pipeline to get continuous feedback on what licenses you're using. You can even put policy in that pipeline that breaks the build if applications break your license policy. Lastly, you can spread the word. Talk to your coworkers about open source licensing and get their thoughts on what the best way is for your organization to improve transparency and compliance with the terms of each license. At the end of the day, you want to deliver business value to your customer. And you often do that by shipping valuable software to them. By complying with license rules, you reduce organizational risk and foster a generative work culture.
Thank you very much.